Hi, nerdies. Uh, it's Danny, and we're with another episode of Chatting with Nerdies. I'm here with Tales of Adventure and a new co host for once, Link. Hello. I'm, hi. hi, I'm Link. I'm usually the one playing the fuck up characters. Ah. You mean fighters, marshals, I mean, sorry. Same thing. <laughs> Um, do you guys want to, like, go around and introduce yourself and introduce your character that you play, like, your race, class, or, and, like, a fun little tidbit if you want? Sure. I mean, I guess I, I enjoy hearing the sound of my voice, as everyone else can attest to. Uh, Link, that was great, great steak foley, by the way. I heard the, the crunch of the crust. Of, <laughs> wow. Just fucking al dente. Um, <laughs> well... Hello, everybody. Um, I am Dapper Wombat. I am both the showrunner and the dungeon master of Tales of Adventure, Agents of Boo. Um, I a, basically play all of the other characters that uh, these lovely uh, fine folks that I have with me today don't play. I'm Natalie. I play Pax, a changeling slash mimicking, same thing, different name, uh, rogue. And uh, they them pronouns, and they look different in every episode. So, there you go. Slowly, <laughs> I'm trying to look up my character sheet, Lee, so you can go. <laughs> oh, <laughs> I'm trying to find out. I was like, I actually don't really know what my character wow. is. Wow. Like, wow. <laughs> you need to be so unprepared. So wow. unprofessional. You didn't you, say you anything. You give me shit about this. You've been giving me shit about this for years. Oh, hey, look, get loaded. Um, <laughs> oh, hey, look at that. <laughs> Oh, hey, I mean, look, it was, was the whole time. you about, sh- about D and D, right? <laughs> but again, this is the actual how it works in D and D. You're you're normally stalling, or your DM is stalling. Normally, it's our DM. He's lucky that we're not in game this time. <laughs> I'll, I'll go, Lee. Sorry. <laughs> Hi, my name is David. I play a rationally logical, overly curious fallen ASMR pack keeper warlock named Sarah. That is a mouthful, I know, but our DM has forbidden me to shorten it. So. <laughs> I didn't know we were doing full intros. Damn, I would have. I didn't mine. do it in my voice. <laughs> oh, oh god! Oh wait, y'all y'all got character voices. I do. Jared does. I mean, it you, does. You, you said it now. You got to do it. You got to. Yeah, you have to do oh, it. Oh, can do it. You gotta, it can do it. Got to commit to the bit. <clears throat> oh, oh, oh man, this will take a second. Hold on. Oh, you're gonna love this. <laughs> Hey everyone, I play a rationally logical, overly curious, fallen ASMR pack keeper warlock. My name is Zara. <laughs> I love it. I love it. Ten out of ten. Um, oh, yeah. Hey y'all, I'm Lee. I play the character Seraph, who is a stoic but well meaning revenant. Um, he is my zombie boy son and is a literal ball of fire. If you listen to the podcast, you will know exactly what I mean when I say that. <laughs> Okay, <laughs> I'm curious. I'm curious now. Like, can you can you elaborate a little bit? Um, don't piss him off. Okay. <laughs> yeah. No, that's that's a great rule of thumb. Um, yeah. Just don't. Just don't. Like he he is he has a heart of gold. He is all for justice and law. But if you piss him off, he will kill you, and he will all set right. you on fire. <laughs> Okay. No take it. <laughs> so can y'all tell us a little bit about like uh your current campaign that you're doing now? Just like kind of overall plot, I guess. If there is one. If there's one, yeah. It's whatever the DM says is like a third of the plan, and that's pretty much what we go off of. <laughs> yeah, technically. So like I I, so basically kind of the plot in the very least the synopsis for this is um basically for this particular season as i've kind of like broken it up hopefully we'll have more seasons you know as time goes on but this is more of kind of like an introductory style not only an introductory for the players to get to know each other but introductory uh for the players to know some of the main piece the npcs that will they will be interacting with as well as just kind of a introduction into the world um for the current episodes that we have out now we just had one that dropped uh yesterday uh, as of this recording um that is i believe episode 10 
um, which is kind of when they wanted to go out, have like a night in the town and kind of do some karaoke. But I guess the best way to fully describe kind of Agents of Boo is a mix between the Men in Black, Witcher, and with a whole lot of Hellboy thrown in. All right. I think that's the best way. Like a cult, it's urban fantasy, diesel punk, magitech, occult mystery, the hodgepodge thing. <laughs> Love that's, that so much. You get all the best parts then. Oh, for sure. <clears throat> um, are we going to say something, Link? Oh, yes. I have the. I always have the greatest questions here. Danny's got the normal ones. I got the fun ones. I have no idea what his questions are. So. <laughs> yes, I've kept them a secret. Nobody in my group knows anything. <laughs> what is everybody's favorite weapon? Like, What's all your characters' favorite things to do? Weapons, fighting. Oh, I can go first on that one. Um... To piggyback of what you had asked me, uh, Danny, so my character is what's known as a blood hunter, uh, which is a formulated uh, class created by our wonderful DM. And so essentially I use blood magic and I summon these two onyx axes and I have the opportunity to set them on fire. And if I use up all my rune points, I can use my heart points to uh, hack a motherfucker to bits while again <laughs> setting them on fire. Beautiful. I love that. It's my... he, is, he is an angry, angry man. He is literally guts from Berserk. That is like the best way I can describe to rap. It is my there we go. somewhat interpretation of the Bloodhunter class um, that came out for Critical Role, like for Matt Mercer and stuff, but I mm -hmm. took parts I liked and I kind of modified it to fit in this particular uh, not only like homebrew setting but also kind of a homebrew mechanics slash homebrew game system that we actually use. Mm -hmm. Nice. There's just so much to read for a blood hunter so I don't think I could ever play <laughs> that class. Oh, for sure. There's like a gajillion things. And <laughs> I mean, no, no. I just like the fact that because my character is a zombie boy that he can't actually die until he fulfills his life mission so all i need to know is oh i can just burn up all my points and i won't die i'll just go to sleep in the middle of battle <laughs> <laughs> he'll just be like oh well that was my last one y'all handle this knocks out <laughs> i love think, that so we're gonna have like favorite weapons you said yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. i think for the most part my so as I said, my character is like overly curious and intellectual. So his best weapons are probably like we call them hex blades, and mm. those are basically like conjuration weapons. I can basically conjure any martial weapon that I want, and I get mm. automatically gain proficiency with it. And it's like a combination of you get that you know that mystical insight, martial prowess. Um, I can basically take any weapon that I want. Ashad knows some of these uh, weapons, but I even take older weapons, like either like a chainmail or like um, older Chinese style martial art weapons, and I kind of like conjure those into my uh, arsenal. But I basically like using those, even though I play a warlock, which normally people just say Eldritch Blast until the continuation of any match, and I actually don't like that. I like using my head more. Even during mm -hmm. our podcast, there are like a but there are like a bunch of scenes where I'm just like I will look for any little thing to use. Like even in episode one, where we were like all getting together, the first thing I used was like a stone or something. It was it mimics a, a thunderstone. I threw it to the lights and then just threw out everything in just total darkness. And like everything except for the NPCs has night vision for us, so <laughs> it's just like it worked out in our it literally worked out in our favor. And I just don't remember the actual episode fully, but it was just like a really fun thing because even that. I think in the episode, she's like, wait, somebody grabbed it? Oh, good, because I was going to grab it. <laughs> if you don't have dark vision, well, that's an issue, not an issue. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I was like, that's an issue. Sorry, cannot help you. I'm my sorry, fault. that sounds like a whole lot of not my problem. <laughs> I'm sorry, you're lame. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, you didn't, you didn't keep up with the program here. <laughs> sorry, you're so basic. Average human players. Yes. 
But no, that's my first time playing something with spell casting. So it's like the spells are alone are just kind of interesting to use and just put together in combos. So I'm just really liking that and then just using those hex blades for now. There's more of a definition. I just don't want to read it all because it's like eight paragraphs long. <laughs> it's like a whole dissertation our DM put in for home brutes. Man's pulled up the whole sheet. <laughs> No, literally, it's like like thirty pages long. <laughs> I'm I'm complicated like that. I'm sorry. Mm. <laughs> um, so first off, I'm sorry for this unruly boy. Um, you think I've been gone for days, not three hours, but <laughs> um, <laughs> Pax is a works to live, not lives to work. So they use a rapier. They are trained as an assassin. And so their go-to move is just clean and quick. Like, they want to get the job done and go out that night. So they just have a, a rapier. They have a gun, but their preference is the rapier. And they just, like, usually a clean through the eye, through the brain, something like that. Nice and quick. Best type of assassin right there. Yeah. <laughs> So I, I'm kind of curious. How do you guys do guns in your campaign? Uh, like, do you Sean still follow, you like, misfire and reloading properties? Yeah. Um, so a, there are misfires. I don't think anybody... I think maybe somebody misfired once. Or maybe not at all. But I, that only really occurs when someone rolls, like, a natural one. And... At the very least, even though we've been doing this for, like, forever, I don't think anybody's misfired with a firearm yet. Um, no, not the weapon you're thinking of, but... Yeah, I, okay, yeah. Um, but at the very least for this, I do... I kind of changed a couple of things with it. Because I already knew that firearms exist, like, the table, like, the stat firearms exist in the DM's guild. Or to mm -hmm. in the Dungeon Master's Guide. And so I just basically use those stats. Um, but I almost kind of treat them like spells in a sense where if you have a spell that has, like, you know, you roll X amount of, like, die, you don't get to add any of your ability score modifier to it. Um, I just kind of like it that way because it's almost like, uh, sure, you can kind of target it, but again, it's, it's supposed to be kind of a, a swing of a balance. Um, only because, like, it's it's a firearm, so it's supposed to feel... When you hit someone really solid with it, it's supposed to really feel, you know, have a little bit of power to it. Um, mm -hmm. But... And then different things, like uh, wanting to have different variations, like, there's a difference between having what Pax has, which is, like, more of a revolver. Uh, I, there's two types of handguns. You have the handgun that has 14 bullets, uh, does less damage, or you have the revolver that has less bullets and does more damage. Um, and basically, I usually have it as, like, a, try to keep it up with an ammo capacity. So, like, letting people know that, hey, if you have a revolver, you have six shots. That's how many shots you can take before you have to reload. Mm -hmm. And so just kind of keeping in to that, I know it hasn't come up yet, but things like special ammunition and things and the like... Um, Normally, I just use it where it kind of converts one damage to another, or maybe getting like a plus one or a plus two, especially because how I'm running firearms, you don't add any ability score modifier. So it just kind mm -hmm. of keeps in that nice balance, but it still doesn't feel like it is nerfed by any by any stretch of the imagination. Because like there's a, um, that'll come out in a later episode, but there's a player who now has a gun that does like 2d12 damage. Oh, wow. Yeah. Hmm. All right, loving the guns. Mm -hmm. But for a nice follow-up question, what would you guys say your most hated but friendly NPC is? Like someone who is allied to the party in some form, or just neutral, not an enemy, but you just hate them. Like as a like as a person, personally. Um, I my character hasn't been around in the campaign long enough. So I'm going to leave that to our, our other lovely players. <sighs> Who's the one that hates Zara? Leo. Leo, yep. So yep, there's this, like... The hot-headed there... <laughs> uh, dragonborn, yeah. There is um, this group, so everyone's in teams. Like, obviously, we're a team. There's another group that's a team. 
uh, and we love everyone on the team. Like we've gone out with them a couple of different nights. They're just great. And then they have, and all of their names end in A L E sounds. So we call them the Ales. Except they have this one character on their team called Leo, and he like early on, early episodes, picked a fight with Zira, and none of we all hate him now. And so, like, when the ales are like, we're going out, and we're like, is that guy coming with us? <laughs> <laughs> He's a real buzzkill. If if there was, like, a whole group and all of their names ended with, like, the same thing, I would mix them up so much. <laughs> oh, no, that's why I say that I uh, diversified it, because you have Mikhail, yeah. you have Dale, and you have shit. Yeah, it's not too bad. See, we, call- we had... <laughs> We should have named we, it we, Kale. We really should have named him Kale. Oh, don't I worry. Swear. Don't worry. Kale's coming up. Kale's coming up. Don't worry. <laughs> we, we had two NPCs, and one of them was called Toblin, and the other one was called Todrin. Mm. And so I would mix them up all the time to the point where I got our DM mixing them up. <laughs> well, no, we do that I, with two of our player characters. Yeah, because, yeah. well, while Lee, you're, it's Seraph. I uh, go by Sarah. And David go and David's character's name is Zara, uh, so that's that's always fun. We're so gonna split up, and then we're just gonna be the same two. We're really just gonna do that just in spite, <laughs> just, so you know. you. Uh, oh, <laughs> just hey, so you son, know. Suddenly, you great. all like just get hit out of nowhere like a rock, and just like instantly die. I don't. <laughs> oh I don't hey, look! I did. I, I oh, oh hey, look! I use vortex warp. I mean, oh hey, no, your vortex, your magic just doesn't work. I don't, I don't know what's going on. Your magic doesn't. Work. You just die. Hey, look, hey, look, Guys, I still save it for the keys. podcast. <laughs> <laughs> maybe, maybe someone will just like hide a fireball somewhere, and your whole house will blow up. Yeah. My God, that happened to us. Because <laughs> one of our party members stole something. He stole a wizard spell book, so he became a wizard, and our house got blown up. <laughs> Beautiful. Yes, the wizard came back with contingency and delayed blast fireball. Time stopped us. It was a whole ordeal. We got interviewed by the queen. Horrible. Yeah, he yelled at by the queen. <laughs> it was a one sided uh, interview. But, yeah, right, but then again, that's why I went in doubt. You always have to make sure you kill the wizard. They do but he wasn't like there. This. He planted it. He wasn't there. Oh, okay, man. He got through our house's defenses, of which we had a garden <laughs> gnome. He became the garden gnome. He took on the the appearance of our guard. <laughs> yes, he literally became our guard. It was so. <sighs> Nat, those are some ideas we want to write down for season two. See, Max should have hired someone who spoke common. Maybe we we wouldn't have had this problem. <laughs> That's true. So, Danny, did you do a question yet? Or is it back to my turn? Uh, I you you could have you could ask another question. We don't have to have turns. All right. What would you guys? So this is for everybody, DM included. What was the scariest moment in the campaign where like your heart just was beating? Doesn't even matter if it was like scary for your character specifically. What just like made you think, oh, things are going to shit, and this we might not get out of this one. I'm gonna let David talk because I think he <laughs> looks like yeah, he has no, a reaction yeah. to this. No, it's because my character is probably so. My character technically is cursed. Okay, I love that. Uh, uh, it it's basically like made to fail in a way. Not like I'm not technically on purpose, but there are moments that I do have to roll. Um, otherwise, I do fail, and it it, it gets kind of grim in the fact that he transforms into something completely different because of his curse so there are times where i can control it and other times that i can't depending on how i roll uh there is there was one time during the season episodes that haven't come out yet um that you know that when people listen to they'll understand it why um during what's it called the spider arc yeah (laughs) yeah Mm -hmm. during the spider arc that he transforms and it starts to get a little bit out of hand so it, it's one of those things that, to me, that was one of the cringiest episodes we had. <laughs> like one of the we, most we terrifying still... ones is that you have one person in your party that can probably, like, 
hurt people. And in my defense, in the beginning of the episodes, it actually came to light that I killed my last team. So oh. that was the other thing. That That's I what I was Jesus. Thinking of. Yeah. Because I think that's how we ended an episode where you were just like, oh, I killed them. And my char the characters were like, oh. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, we just left it off. I just, even, like, just drops yeah. off the entire episode. Yep, and Pax was wasn't like, even in the room, but I was just like, no! Yep, because he was just like, oh yeah, no, that, that's, oh yeah, no, because I killed them. And I'm like, and that's where we're going to end the episode. And you're like, what the fuck? He was waiting for so long. I was stalling I for like was, five minutes. I was just, waiting. <laughs> I was just waiting for that. I didn't want to because I saw his face and I was just like, I'm not going to say it. <laughs> I was like, for the longest and time, yeah, I'm not going to say it. Yet I was able to end it, so there. I should look for a different uh, cue just to be like maybe I, maybe I can prolong this. <laughs> <sighs> I think for me, uh, hmm. I guess that's always an interesting thing because you're always like, oh yeah, as a dungeon master, you kind of have this idea, say, like, oh yeah, no, this is supposed to go this way, and then, then your players are like, then your players do something else, and you're just like, oh fuck. Um, <laughs> I think for me, I think. It still has to be, honestly, the trial uh, monster hunt that you'll have to go uh, for fighting the Slipskin Hag. Um, only because of, like, I I wanted to kind of do monsters a little bit different. You know, kind of like having a little bit more, like, folklore and having different weaknesses. So the monster that I put in front of these guys is basically um, in uh, real-life uh, culture. It's known as a Boo Hag. But basically, I have decided this creature basically has, like, a skin that it wears. Uh, it has more, like, defenses, but it can't really use any of its offensive capabilities. It has to hunt without its skin because it basically, like, can contort its body to fit into, like, small and tight spaces. And the thing is, like, it um, smells horrible, but also it, like, paralyzes its victims. It basically crushes and squeezes the breath out of them. Um, almost kind of like a like a Jiangshu and like a, a traditional like Chinese hopping vampire because that's also kind of what the Boo Hags did. Um, and so I had these like really cool weaknesses like oh yeah no if you destroy its skin you know it can't go out in the sunlight you know it's an undead creature doesn't like radiant damage. And I also threw in a fun thing where like it has um, I think it's a Rhythmania the um, weakness that vampires have where you throw a bunch of different things on the ground. They're, like, compelled to kind of count them. And I was like, okay, cool. You know, like, I have enough things. Like, this creature is going to be kind of deadly, but I have, like, enough things here to be like, yeah, no, like, you guys can kind of exploit these weaknesses and be fine. And mm -hmm. they tracked it down to its lair. Uh, this is, like, round two, essentially, like, of this fight. Um, going, I think, like, Zero was like, ah, man, fuck it, that's it. And they, at this point, I should back up. At this point, they realized... The reason why this monster was feeding was because it just recently gave birth to like a litter of these slipskin hags. <sighs> and so I was like, okay, cool. You know, like they, they still got this, they can do this. And uh, David, uh, Zara, um, saw the cradle in the lair and is like, I'm going to cast Eldritch Blast. And his Eldritch Blast does fire damage. And obviously it hit because it's a helpless, helpless thing. And the cradle with all of its children went up in just flames. And I was just like, oh, shit. Because they had the plan where they were going to, like, throw something to, like, distract it. And I was just like, well, that would work. But now this thing is, like, fucking enraged. Um, so it basically said, fuck that plan and went after him. And I, I'm pretty sure that thing basically got onto you and, like, squeezed you hard enough to like break your like to break your back and just to drop you and so i was just like oh like the minute that happened my eyes were just like oh fuck um because again <laughs> i i make these characters with weaknesses but i also make them kind of i make them pretty strong for a reason yep well, i mean like if you were gonna way. kill them the, sorry, what were you saying? Oh, I was just gonna say I had gone out of my way to get alphabet noodles to throw at it, and I didn't get to use them. Yeah, <laughs> oh. I was like, it has to count them and alphabetize them. It'll take it twice as long. Yeah, <laughs> and I was like, that was a great plan, but I was just like, eh, this this creature's like, nah, you you killed uh, you killed its babies. It has nothing left to live for. Fuck. 
Uh, <laughs> I love this so much. Amazing creature right there. Why do people always go for the children? That just makes the creature go to phase two immediately. That's what I always do anyway. You kill it first and then you kill the kid. I mean, I have a phase two as well, so. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, people have the children. Ten, ten, and? <laughs> so, someone isolate that clip. <laughs> you kill it first and then you kill the kid. Yeah, it's like, you don't kill, you kill it first, then you kill the children. <laughs> That's just, like, the simplest plan. Fuck them no, kids, mean, bro. Yeah, fuck them kids, bro. <laughs> they they were just out there in the field, murdering <laughs> younglings. Again, he's like, he's like the whole rational thing. was just like, well, let's see, I can do this and then do this. Yeah, this looks like no, the lesser of two evils. No, I specific. hold on, hold on. I specifically <laughs> remember what you said were like, oh, no, fuck this, I'm irritated. That was in oh, Zara's yeah. voice, not yours. <laughs> that was the whole reason why you're like, nah, man, fuck your kids. <laughs> I don't remember that one. I, I have to listen. Uh, I, have to, I, have, I have to listen. That. I have to listen back to it now because yeah, I don't yeah, go that. ahead and listen back because you know I'm right. <laughs> <laughs> you're like I again he's not good with emotions he doesn't understand them so it's like one of those in the moment things where it's just like okay i guess this is enragement now we yeah. know what now we know what anger is we need to be like all right alex roll the tapes we know you're editing this <laughs> we're to we're get in there it. besides that's not even the worst thing i've done like the dm's done way worse in our old campaigns <laughs> yeah because i'm the dungeon master i get a passive doing worse things oh yeah and you oh, cringe yeah. when i just blow up a nest <laughs> yeah you had child enslavement. <laughs> who, who was it that was like, it's technically not a war crime because the Geneva Conventions don't yeah. exist? <laughs> that's, like, that's the face. That's him right there. That's the face. Oh my god. Uh, Danny, you got any more questions? Unless anyone else has some beautiful answers. <laughs> do, you, do, you, do you guys have any more oh shit moments that you would like to share? Uh I think for me that was it. Um, at the very least, on my end, I don't think I really have any oh shit moments. Um, I think it's less like oh shit, more just like ah shit, uh, trying to get some of this <laughs> stuff recorded. Um, just te just yeah. technical breakdowns, just programs not working right. Just like it was. Oh god, it was a whole mess. Like we just finished wrapping up. Uh, recording season one of the podcast and like we have a couple more episodes before we get to that part but like it took us such a long time to get there we're at the finale and then like a month later we're at I the finale we, finale <laughs> the finale was what like four or five recording sessions it was yeah because we lost some stuff at one point like oh. sean was like i just don't think we could do this and i was like sir i read not one but two Nonfiction books on podcasting for you. You don't get to quit. I wasted fiction <laughs> reading time reading nonfiction on podcasting like a white dude with a beard. You don't get to quit this <laughs> podcast. Yeah, yeah. Natalie sure did threaten me, but like, if we fucking quit right now, I'm gonna fucking snap your neck. And I'm like, all right. Hey guys, no, I think uh, I got no, no. Dude to be fair, I think I said I was going to bludgeon you with the books I had to read. Oh yes, that's what that's the threat was. Yeah, that's, that, that's much Most better. Threatening. We don't we don't stab here. We bludgeon. Yes, Blood we bludgeon. Tom is more effective. It was the bludgeon poetic of it was the books themselves. <laughs> <laughs> so I was like, hey guys, hey, woo! Suddenly we got a second win. I think we can. <laughs> 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 he gives us a short rest. He's like, hey, you all just magically get a short rest. Please don't yeah, kill me, Matt. <laughs> yeah. You're like checking in the back into the library, and they're gonna right. be like, uh, man. <laughs> There, there's blood on excuse, this? Excuse me? It's not mine, why it's mine. It, why is there a oh. bit of brain chuck on here? Oh, don't worry, it's not mine. <laughs> <laughs> I'm friends with like three of our local librarians. They'll cover for me. It's okay. They're oh. like, we're gonna have to, we're gonna have to find you for this. <laughs> so how did, how did y'all meet? How did you like get together and was like, yes, let's, let's play D and D and let's make a podcast out of it. <laughs> Oh god, I guess that is a while. I guess does anybody want to start with their their how I integrated all of this or like so I um during COVID in 2020, I had um a different internet friend 
who I had followed for Tumblr on years, and she started doing like Friday night hangouts for everybody. And I was in the most Fridays. Sean was not there like a ton. Uh, but I think he had mentioned something about a podcast in the general chat and I couldn't find it in my, uh, my podcast app because it's, it's, um, I use pocket casts, but sometimes it takes a little while to like update their library. And so like two or three months later, I actually mixed it up. I thought it was our friend Heather who was doing it. And it was one of the Fridays that Sean just happened to be in the hangout that night. And I was like, Hey, Heather, weren't you uh doing a podcast what was that called like i don't remember what the name was and ashawn was like hey that was actually me do you want to be in it <laughs> and i was like um <laughs> sure i haven't played D because my irl group as it met up since the pandemic so i was like yeah sure whatever <laughs> but it was a very weird uh kismet thing yeah because i was just like hey you want to you want to join a podcast you're just like all right I mean, she, she hasn't decided to leave yet. Well, she's already bludgeoned me to True. death to, like, finish it. So now I got to finish it. Right. Um, I had to read two books. Yeah. So, <laughs> I, guess, I don't know. David Lee, you got, you all have anything to add? Um, I can chime in if that's cool with you, David. Go ahead. <laughs> Mine, mine's pretty short. Um, so, I'm still very, very new to D&D. I did it. I was a part of a campaign back when I was in school and had to like leave because again uh college (laughs) but uh ashan and i were friends like before he invited me onto the podcast and when i shared with him that i was like interested in D &D and whatnot but hadn't had the opportunity to like find another campaign to join that's when he was like well i got news for you i was like oh (laughs) okay um (laughs) so i'm i'm still like learning or i guess relearning a lot of things and getting used to just like playing in general because it's been a very long time and i was already like super new when i first did it like way back when Mm -hmm. um but yeah similarly to natalie's story he literally just asked me and i said oh why not oh yeah at least you guys got asked jeez (laughs) 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 i was just just gonna be like so was this just one big recruitment Wow, you're just gonna throw me under the bus like that, David? I'll throw you under the train and I'll throw you under the specific metro. I'll throw you under the Amtrak. All right, all right. I see how it is. Mm. No, like, no, so, no, the funny thing is that Ashan actually got me started in DD. So, this was way back in college. I don't even remember how long now. It's probably been like five years ago, maybe longer, that he first did like a mini campaign, like one night we were having like game night at a friend's house. And he's like, yeah, you all want to try D&D? And I was like, I have no idea what that is. I don't even play video games. I have, like I told you, I have this Alienware. It has not a single game on here. I don't play anything. So it's just like the first time he ever got me to do it. And he's like, yeah, you got to role play. You got to just make up a random person. And I did. And he's like, okay, change it. I was like, why? Because that's racist. I was like, what do you mean that's racist? (laughs) I didn't, I thought, like, he said role play. I thought it was like, I didn't know what to do at the time. Like, I literally just made up a random person. I was just like, yeah, I just chose, I don't even know what I chose. I think I chose some Asian and then, and then I just went with a voice and he's like, yeah, please don't do that. I was just like, I don't know what to do. Yeah, I don't know what to do. So (laughs) that was the first time I ever did D&D. And I was just like, okay, so it took me a while. And then Fast forward, um, the podcast, I was a part of the first campaign, but we. this is, I think, what, our third attempt? Yeah, this is the... The third attempt? Thir- yeah, this is the third, t- third attempt. Hey, yes. hey, third time's the charm. See, that's oh, what I keep telling everybody. Mm, yeah, third attempt's the... Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah that, 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 that phrase. So, no, <laughs> but, like, the first time, um, it, it didn't really it was like an idea and it, we didn't really invest too much time with it. But then the second time we got a few more people to recruit for it and we were able to get through a season one, but that was probably about it. And schedule wise and COVID um, all our schedules changed. Everybody, obviously life happens. So we kind of just deviated from that. I ended up moving States. I ended up moving two States and now I'm in Florida. So we're all in different time zones now. And then the third campaign, which is now, has probably been the most ongoing. So it was it was one of those things that I know what Sean had mentioned that like a while back, it was one of his like goals to probably leave an imprint. And, you know, since we're here, why not 
build something that maybe we can cultivate and see how far we can take it. And that was like, you know what, I'll join you on that. I'll help you whenever way I possibly can. But that's pretty much what led to it. So I kind of been uh, around with it each and every time. So no matter how many times it's failed, I'm just like, no, I'm here for it. <laughs> whenever you need it, I'll, ju I'll just be here for it. I don't know why I keep throwing myself into these situations, but I'm here for it. <laughs> It's maybe it, maybe it's be, maybe maybe it's because he bribes me every single time. He's like, "Hey, I'll buy you food." I was like, "Okay, that's fine." I'm, yeah, easy, yeah. I'm, I'm easy. To, I'm easy to bribe. Love and bribery go such a long way. <laughs> and food. Very true. Yeah, I like I guess to kind of piggyback. Uh, yeah, no, I think I just kind of grabbed my own little group of like, I don't want to say eclectics, but you know, I kind of grabbed my own little group, right? Like I just saw who was kind of interested in like just kind of like feeling out people's vibes and at the very least i think everybody still very much vibes very well together um and i think that's also been a really big boon that i was able to like kind of hit the mark on that um but yeah i i knew and i guess we'll kind of get into it later when, when the stuff kind of comes up but like like david said this is the third try and you know third time's the hopefully the charm but we have definitely gotten a lot farther with this group and just kind of like with everything that we have been able to do and i'm always thankful uh that i had the opportunity to do all of this uh, because of the wonderful people that who want to continue to stay in this and to kind of like stay in my corner and, you know, deal with my, deal with my nonsense of like, you know, the self doubt of like, Oh, well, if this is going to become a thing or like, you know, getting frustrated about scheduling and everything like that. And yet I still have such this amazing support group of players that it just kind of keeps me. And obviously the threat of death of getting bludgeoned by, uh, by two podcasts. <laughs> Um, but I'm, I'm thankful and I'm humbled each and every day that I have an opportunity to, to play. Hmm. Very good answer. Too bad it was a lie. Your lie detector just went off. Oh, oh shit. <laughs> <laughs> hey, those aren't admissible in court. <laughs> I'm good this is in court then. Right. <laughs> it's not a court of law, but it's a court of opinion. Wait, wait, wait. Can we yeah. do a campaign where we take the DMs to court and, like, all the players just come, like, against you and you just have every single character from any possible campaign and that's your campaign is a courtroom? Okay, it's like so Ace yeah. Attorney d, &D. Yeah, oh exactly. God. Actually, oh my god. You know, oh my god, we, well... You know I what? Th that's my first campaign that I'll ever run as a dungeon master. Anybody want to join, you are welcome to see your DM. <laughs> you feed Ace Attorney in a TTRPG? <laughs> <laughs> I will do it in Zara's voice, just for you. Oh God, <laughs> I'm out. Mm. And that's gone. <laughs> but Nat, you're the you're the you're the awesome secretary because you're good at keeping track of everything. Mm. It's a little My Girl Friday, but okay. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, there is. A right. I mean, I guess there is a legal team legal team of the Bureau of Occult Observations. Hmm. <laughs> All right, I got a good question because this happened to me. Was there any like a new PC that entered into the field that every other PC just kind of generally hated for a little bit? I would know as my poor fucking cleric got basically <laughs> drugged by the party for one. We didn't hate the, your PC. We didn't like you. <laughs> yeah, they hated me actually. That yeah. included. Yeah, but we're out. We're I, need I need to explain myself. This was two years ago. Two and a half now, technically. So, yeah. I joined this campaign that's becoming a podcast two years ago. And all these people are like, hey, you should join. Because I was the only person looking for a campaign in the Discord it was being ran in. And I'm like, oh, okay, this, this uh, nice person named Jamie invites me. And I talk to the DM JJ. We all this fun time. We're making jokes in the group chat and stuff, and then I post it. The infamous gay stares. We almost got you kicked out of the 
I I have been very well known as not being able to read a room correctly. And I posted a meme that ticked a few people the wrong way. To the point where everyone tried to, I think, kill me in character. And then a week later, we were all friends, I think. Maybe. Yeah. <laughs> well, because... It was, it was like, so, it was, I think it was just more per, poorly worded, if anything. And we were like, oh, so you're saying it's easier to be gay than be straight in this society. That's not I true. I sitting there like, man. Nope. Nope. Yeah, we were, I can see it. I can see it. So, that's, that's a way to start a fight. So when you, yeah. when you yeah, posted yeah, so. it, <laughs> I was with our another uh, player at the time, and we had our in-person D and D session, and we're like passing it around. We're like, "Is this homophobic? Is this homophobic?" And we're like, mm, "That's kind of sketch." Yes. So the only reason I made that comment is because Jamie said something that got deleted. As the sorry to name drop all of a sudden, but um, they they said some sort of comment to the meme, and I just did a retort. Like, I just said the same thing, but backwards, and that kind of screwed me. <laughs> yeah. We, we, we really, like, sh shit on him in-game. In we, like, we had a drunken monk uh, in our party, and he spiked his drink in-game with his, like, really strong booze, and he, like, threw up and passed out, and we, we just left him there, and we were just talking, and he, he was, he's, like, laying face first and his vomit on the table, and, like, a guard comes over, it's like, you realize it's illegal to spike drinks in this town. So you realize this <laughs> yes. is right? You realize this is, there are a few consequences. And then we had to go do a bunch of quests as repayment for the crime. Including me, because. <laughs> but, um... Is it the horse yes. piss thing? You know, that's a better question. What's a running joke on some random thing someone said? Because my character once said, man, this drink tastes like horse piss. And everyone immediately said, said, everyone immediately started going, oh, how do you know what horse piss tastes like? And that was the running gag for, like, half a year. Oh, or, like, man. you just going around in town sniffing horse piss. <laughs> you got a piss <sighs> cake. Uh, we... Uh, gave Ashawn such a hard time about a character description that we misheard that he changed the character <laughs> description. This uh, grandfather was asking us to look for his grandchildren. He's like, oh, my grandson, blah, blah, blah. He's like, and my granddaughter. And he's describing the granddaughter. And I don't remember what Ashawn meant to say, but we all, all heard <laughs> weird hair. And we're like, damn, that's, that's harsh. That's your granddaughter. And so we're all just like weird hair. And it so, was whack hair. I meant to say black hair, but I said Oh, that's what hair. it was. Sorry. Yes, <laughs> yes whack yeah, hair. Okay. And we're just like, <laughs> okay. <laughs> She's oh, yeah, missing no, and you're worried about her not brushing her hair? <laughs> and I was just like, god damn it. <laughs> so um, I think every time he's described her since, he has said that she had whack hair. It yeah, became canon. Yeah, now, the, the running joke is now she has whack black hair. Whack black hair. Black whack black hair. I think the other I just, think every other like, joke. I tried made. to correct this. Are you are you sure? I'm pretty sure the guy said she has black and it was like, no, 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 no. <laughs> and I was like, God damn it. <laughs> said, he said black hair. It was very rude. About his missing granddaughter, but hey look, whatever. We're looking for a girl with whack hair. If that's how you treat your grandkids, maybe they're not missing. Maybe they just left. Uh, what is that? That's uh, I mean, that's a podcast, right? 40% I try to kill my players. 60% they just give me shit. Somebody's going to the retirement home. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh. I love that. That's wow. like amazing. I think the first oh, running joke we ever had. I think the other first running joke we ever had was that Ashan could not pronounce one of our players' names in real life correctly, oh. and it was like the oh best God. like four weeks of my life. I don't know about that. That, <laughs> that was like I. I think it's like every time the DM makes a mistake is the running joke in our group because every single time he's mispronounced a name or missed an accent, we call him on it. Well, no, not like, only no, that. No fucking breaks. Well, okay, but you once crashed your computer. You said it so bad. Yeah, it crashed. <laughs> That's the thing. His name, his his computer crashed because he tried to pronounce his name. Yeah, <laughs> had some kind of demon incantation accidentally. Jesus. 
<laughs> That's like for like the first five episodes you'd hear, and the person whose name still haunts my computer to this day, and speaking it's of. the zesty. <laughs> yeah, really. Speaking yeah, of, where is he? Going. He's uh, yeah, just really. posted in the thing. Yeah, I was like, oh yeah. Speaking of which, the Elder Sword. Hey. Oh. 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 oh, that's a great ass segue. <laughs> yes. Speak of the devil. Uh, Sean, you should you should introduce oh, my him. Last name. Just to uh, make sure yeah, say his name. What's what's his yeah, name? Uh-huh. Yeah, say his name. His name is Emmett. <laughs> Emmett what? Emmett what? No, don't fucking Hi. do this to me right now. Don't oh, fucking do that. Oh my land. His full name is oh, Emmett land. the Zesty Strozeski. Hello. Oh, that's what's going on? Uh, hi, um, How you doing? Any uh, running jokes that you ha- could think of now that you're here? Oh, yes. Um, wow, yes. I should have oh, been thinking about this. It's a lot of and questions. <laughs> I could have written something up, but no. Yeah. Time to panic. So, anyways, hi, I'm Emmett. Um, I'm just an uh, artist, nerd. Um, I play D&D, obviously. Um, and yeah, I just live in Southern California. Um, Cali boy, don't know what weather is. Um, and I play Roy Ellum, the equivalent of an elven ranger. And he's, he's, he's just a guy. He's old. That's it. 114? Yeah. How old are we talking? Yeah. Like, grandpa Yeah, age? essentially. That's a Wait, he's, baby. He's an elf. That's... Yeah, That's, he's a fourteen-year-old boy, basically. <laughs> <sighs> he's a literal child. Is so, it, this, is it too that, soon to uh, add Tree Daddy to your intro? <laughs> just let it die, please. Yeah, it's just, one of the just, other running gags. Just let it die. Well, it's been one episode. It's not a running gag yet. It happened last. Oh, yeah, year. don't worry. Don't worry. Give it time. Nah, nah. Did we forget about nah. holy cocaine? Nah. Emmett, Emmett, the running jokes in our campaign are going to be your name, and that's oh no, it wouldn't have. Oh it. yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> um. Yes. We also do oh, but I don't think that no, got no. recorded. Is the problem? I don't think. No, that I remember one. I remember one. We call. Uh, we call the Fluffy Father. We, re- we really need to release those tidbits that got erased and just like make an episode of all. Is that. it Pop Pop? <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. Oh yeah. I, oh god, I remember that when he's like when he when he basically told all of you all in the second episode to take a knee, and you just like and you you just sat in his lap and you called him pop pop. And I'm like, god damn it! <laughs> <laughs> Ooh. 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 Um, another one that got another one that's never gonna get released is Land Caviar. <laughs> oh my god, yes. <laughs> I. I don't recall. <sighs> oh my god! Uh, what was I even describing as I land? I think that's caviar. what it was. That know. sounds right. Spiders. Yeah, yeah, we were going yeah, to get a yeah, giant yeah. spider to eat. Yes. <laughs> calamari. Land calamari. That's what it was. It was oh. Land calamari. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah. my god. That's we horrible. Trying to feed. I don't even remember what the creature was, but he kept oh, telling us he was hungry. Yeah. And um, I think it was a game that it was just me and Emmett for some reason. And I was like, okay, I'm going to stay here and talk to him, and you go get the spider, and we'll feed him the giant spider that we killed upstairs. It was a, And so it was a Emmett goes to get the spider, and I'm talking to him, and he's, like, hungry. And I'm yeah. like, oh, yeah, we're going. Have you ever had a spider? I was like, it's great. It's like land calamari. It's going to be. Yeah, you're going like to love test, it. Like a test run. <laughs> yeah, it was, it was indeed a yeah. This was the Chris. one shot that I wanted to be like, hey, yeah. <laughs> how do you all, like, play mm-hmm. together? And also, like, how do you all feel about this? Yeah. T- turns out what it was hungry for was a changeling. Not a spider, but it was fine. <laughs> it was fine. It died anyway. Yeah, it's fine. <laughs> oh. So, hi, I'm Link. I'm the co-host. I wasn't supposed to be here, but I'm here now, and I'm, like, stealing Danny's thunder so badly. It's like, <laughs> that's so sad. <laughs> okay, my questions are, I realize, like, how boring my questions were. Mine were, like, how long have you guys, like, known each other? What made you start a podcast? Gross. Uh, what's your favorite moment? Favorite NPC? And then Link's like, what's your favorite weapon right now? <laughs> <laughs> what's the most terrifying moment you've ever been in? Yeah. <laughs> um, let's see. Actually, uh, are you turning... terrifying moment for oh, in the podcast. Oh, yeah. I didn't know if it was just like in general or like... Answer another question. In life. Yeah, in a terrifying moment, <laughs> my life is terrifying my existential moment. moment. Podcast, my, yeah. my terrifying moment. That's what it is. <laughs> 
Oh, um, shit. Like, I don't know. Like, the, the thing about Roy's <laughs> no, headspace yeah. is that, like, he doesn't really <laughs> get scared. I feel like. How? Um, I mean, maybe during... No, okay, okay. I think the only time he was ever, like, legitimately scared was in the dream sequence. That tracks. I think that's the only time he ever actually, like, that is correct. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Wait, the one that none of the rest of us were in? Yep. <laughs> oh, yeah, that also got omitted. Oh, sick. <laughs> no, actually, Everyone... no. No, it did. No, it did. Because I realized uh, the, since the new episode is out, <laughs> we were able to save that episode. Oh, my God. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> All our dream sequences. Oh, yeah. <laughs> All of your um, dream sequences. <laughs> You you were pretty nervous about that tree baby too. Yeah, that's true. Cause like, yeah. <laughs> I wouldn't call it terrified, but you were very very nervous about that situation. I mean, he was terrified, but like he didn't quite well, know how to process the, it, so he didn't like thing. fully comprehend what was going well, what on. What about the time I showed you Zara's form? He was, <laughs> but also like, like it just kind of is. So he's like the way he handles problems is like, okay, oh, this is a thing. Let's deal with that now. <laughs> um. Do, do I? That's the question. Do um, you want to tell them a little bit more about your dream sequence um, with the tree? I, I think, I think they should listen to it. But I, th do at least I, I might give my own thoughts on it. Um, I think it's some kind of okay. um, eldritch being that just so happens to have ties to my homeland, mm -hmm. as well as. Uh, possibly the f running force behind all the things that the the evil bad guy thing guys are doing, um, is what I'm thinking. But go have a gander. That's great. Interesting. Yeah. Eldritch beings plus steampunk. Call of Cthulhu. Hmm. Yeah, uh, yeah, <laughs> uh, yeah. It's basically it's. Um, I never really enjoyed, and I guess it's going to kind of sound weird to say, but I never really enjoyed. The ex not the existential dread, but just like the aura of like no matter what you do, uh, you can't really change anything. So I'm like, man, fuck it. I'm just gonna give people magic and guns. You can go fight God. It's like, yeah, yeah, you can go fight God when you're a high enough level. <laughs> <laughs> I love existential dread, but I always keep the beam, the string, the single string into the dark that my players could grab and escape with. That's the that's the perfect feeling when they know all hope is lost and then they see it in the distance the glowing light yeah but yeah, it also I... <laughs> just sitting there be like what the fuck do i do what the yeah. fuck do i, I think do for me the other really big influence even though i've never actually played the game but i love the aesthetic um the really big influence for me with all of this too is like the darkest dungeon series um, I love that fucking game. Because, like, yeah, like, it's it's brutal, it's deadly, but, like, it still has its moments of, like, hope and, like, just finding hope in a hopelessness situation. And especially with, like, how I formulated Agents of Boo to be at that point in my life, because I was very sick, I just, I kind of needed that. Um, so, mm -hmm. Is I wanted to kind of like reinforce this idea, and like even with the idea of like the Bureau of Occultic Observations, like they the agents knew flat out, like y'all y'all might make it, y'all might not be able to make it or come back from a mission, and you know wrangling with the that idea of death, but also like still pushing on forward of doing what you all can as just uh you know as agents in upholding this like even with the um you know like even with the season finale i don't want to spoil too much of it but like nah you guys are just like nah let's 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 fuck this up or like even a better um a better example of this uh example that i almost kind of like cried and like i choked up at my players was uh and this is like from the first campaign so david you know exactly what i'm talking about uh they had a uh, they had their trial period, they had their final exam, and they basically ran through a modified version of the Death House. And the idea was supposed to be it was a simulation be from all the different agents that experienced this 
and kind of adding in their own personal flavors. And so it was supposed to be a testing ground, you know, to kind of show like their fear, the horror, and like the absolute overall, like just dread and just of the situation that happened. So I basically still use the idea of like Rose and Thorn, like with the, um, I think it's the, I can't remember their last name. Um, but like with their family and that sort of stuff, but I kind of made it a little bit more tragic. Um, I, I don't want to, uh, I guess I'm going to say this as a content warning right now. Um, but like in the, uh, in the episode or like in the episode and when they find out and kind of go through the mystery, they find out that their parents were once happy. Um, but their mother couldn't conceive, uh, their, they hired in a new maid, but the maid and their father fell in love. Uh, the mom essentially got jealous and turned to black magic. And essentially, like, started bringing, like, these cult, you know, these cultists into the house. And she turned her, she turned her husband into a deer. Because uh, he was a, like, he was an avid hunter. And she killed the nurse and, like, locked her in a chest downstairs. And the twisted thing behind it was that she, while she was still doing these very horrible things, she still wanted to be a good mother for her children. And, or no, I'm sorry. Uh, the maid before she confronted the uh, the mother uh, put the children in their bed, like put their children in their rooms and locked the door to make sure that they couldn't get out because you know there's craziness happening in the mansion. And because the maid died and the mom didn't know where they were, and the mom basically kind of lost herself to the dark powers at that point, they basically they essentially starved to death up in the attic, and like having that description and having that and like just seeing like at this point we were kind of playing in we were playing in person and then just everybody getting silent and then i think it was um who we were playing with matt at the time matt was just like all right guys what the fuck are we gonna do about this and like everybody was just like nah we're we're fucking taking care of this this ends now and i'm like oh shit and it's just like it, it's always nice to kind of see that like that instance, that idea, that theme of, like, this situation is horribly fucked up. This, what happened to these people and whatever these monsters are, you know, these monsters are incomprehensible, they're deadly, they're vicious, and you might die. What the fuck are you going to do about it? You know? And it's just that kind of, like, nah, man, fuck this. If we're going to go, if we're going to die, we're going to go die and swim. And I love that. It. I love that. Perfect. Beautiful. Love the darkness. Sadly, my players always want to stay in the light in my campaign, the one I'm running, so they don't get to see all the nitty gritty. But. Eh, I mean, but here's the thing, though. Here's the thing I will say. I will say. You have to have a balancing act, right? Like, there. Oh, you can have darkness. You can have something that is edgy and have something that is gritty. But if that edginess, if that grittiness, is shocking for the sake of shocking and not shocking for the sake of either having a point or having some sort of narrative existence, then it's ultimately just useless, at the very least, in my opinion. Anytime oh, yeah. you have to have that darker, kind of like the, some of those edgier moments, you always need to make sure that you balance it out with some sort of cathartic relief or just mm -hmm. having a instance of like, no, nah, like you guys see how fucked up this situation is, but you you all have the potential and the power to do something. Oh yeah, definitely. You Love gotta that. balance it. Everything's a balancing act because if you come off too edgy, then you kind of look like a creep almost. Yeah. But for another question, because we all kind of went on a tangent about eldritch beings, and I love that, and then darkness. <laughs> but to go back to a quick question, what was what all of you would say? The most impactful character death for either you um, or your character, like if you've had any I in any campaign and such. Okay, um, I I can answer first, um, just while everyone's thinking on stuff, just because I have something. I've talked to to mm -hmm. Wombat about goodness. this. Um, I had a um, Twilight cleric, um, half Asmar, half Tiefling, um, to the God of Death. Um, and I freaking love Twilight Clerics. They're one of my favorites. Um, 
and at, at I think it was like level three, level four ish, um, he died. Broken. I love them. And I was like, okay, what well, this character that like I really enjoy just suddenly just died. Um, like he's super stable. Like he knows what he's doing. And I'm like, okay. So I was talking to my DM. I'm like, okay, there's a lot of necromancers around. What if he came back as a revenant? Um, so him being a cleric to the god of death, suddenly coming back as an undead barbarian, no longer having cleric powers, seeming like he he has been abandoned, even though he is still doing his work. It just it was the only way I could get into a barbarian headspace. Um, and then when that character finally died at level nine. Um, after probably about a good year and a half of playing him, like my DM was like, all right, here he's like, he, they find the church of the God of death, like finally laid him to rest properly. And my DM through discord just sends me a link and it's the stat block to solar. So even though he was in that super dark, like solid th five, six months, of still like he believed thoroughly doing his deity's work, it it just it 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 was right in the line of death that just and dealing with the fact that he can't die but should, but like dealing with like okay if I do die I can't continue to do his work I'm in a weird situation, so when he finally died I don't know it's just it, it was such an interesting headspace to be in. And getting to ride all around all the aspects of death that exist in D and D. I love that. That was great, actually. <laughs> Anyone else have some amazing stories to bring up? Um, if any, I I think I'm gonna kind of go first again to kind of give people a little bit more time to think. Um, if they do, but I know for me, it technically wasn't a character my character death but i think it was kind of like a villain uh death so to speak um so mm -hmm. I, my career in the ttrpg space sure i played a little bit of 3.5 in high school but i met a really uh really awesome group of folks in um in college and we played pathfinder and one of the campaigns we played in particular was the um i know the i think it was a haunting of harrow stone or at the very least i think that was one of the first books uh it has a whole thing about with ustalav and like the whispering tyrant and like a necromatic death cult trying to become a legend and everything like that and uh we were kind of hunting down this one character you know at this point i was kind of edgy i had like this guy basically like murder my family and i had to like murder them. it was it was i have i was an edgelord way way back in the day um i like to think i've cooled cooled down a lot um but we find this guy and we you know like he's a bad guy we gotta like beat him up and um as we like kill him we get like a, a brief glimpse into his background and we understand and we empathize why he or i guess sympathize no uh but we understand why he became the way he was because he was he was an orphan you know in a war-torn country um basically there was one instance where like he was running from this uh he's band of mercenaries that basically just burned out his entire village and like he had to bury himself alive and like stay there for like a good couple of days uh you know just to survive and like finding and getting introduced and doctrine in to this cult and like realizing that he does have this power to do something to finally uh, gain control that he just was not uh, able to have in his normal life. And, you know, again, just kind of getting into that headspace of like seeing this and seeing kind of the motivations, not necessarily of like the motivations of your character, but like, why the villains do what they do, you know? And I think that's also, like, something awesome that was kind of really eye-opening. Wow. Yeah. And hmm. like I said, I, I think I really like that idea in the same vein of kind of, like, with Agents of Boo, and I think this kind of showed up um, a little bit in one of the episodes that hasn't come out yet. 
because uh, there was like a discussion between these characters and like talking about different things and whatnot and like some point or another it's just kind of like yeah like these characters or like these creatures or like whoever you all are facing are evil but there is still a reasoning even like the most you know batshit stuff out there uh you know i can't again i can't spoil it but you guys know uh, about what i'm talking about like for the the season finale and just wanting to have that emphasis of like no there is there is much more than just the overall presence of malevolency behind it. or you know it's malevolency to to us because it seems like we're they're harming innocent people but to them you know it's just a it's um what is it to quote uh to quote one of the best examples of a villain in a very over-the-top action game um we're making the mother of all omelets here jack you can't fret over every broke uh broken egg (laughs) oh my god a good quote for that is we're all the heroes in our own story yeah uh let's see i think dan unless anyone else has some character deaths pcs or I guess villains that kind of messed you up. <laughs> I, I love all of my babies, that. and I've protected them very well. <laughs> good answer, good answer. They've all been very safe and loved and cared for. Oh, no. I don't, don't worry, do don't worry. We'll, we'll Aiden would die because you didn't love them enough. Like. <laughs> oh my god. <sighs> Punch. Don't worry, Natalie, we'll, we'll fix that. Don't worry. Oh, oh I already no. told you, if anything happens to Pax... <laughs> <laughs> the book <laughs> just get the other book I, no I will come in with a character more annoying than Zara's character voice oh <laughs> yes please I would love that oh my god that's great that is how they, that you, you see how they treat me this is how they treat me I've been I'm nothing you. Been <laughs> treat I have been nothing but a benevolent dictator I am the R- nice really? player to you <laughs> thank you you are you are if you, that is the, if the you, nicest player. I'm the most annoying player. <laughs> if you want emotional character deaths, Danny, you want to tell them how much, how many times you cried when Otto and my character died? I don't. I, don't, I didn't cry a lot of the times. I just cried when he died because it was so cried, funny. Tried to revive him as well. Oh yeah. Everyone cried when you tried to revive him. He like came down and said no, and like. Went back oh, wait, I tried healing him, I think. I think I tried just spamming him with healing spells, and it didn't work. And he yes. was our cleric, so we couldn't have someone, like, the block cl- him. <laughs> I got paralyzed and double crit by a mini-boss, and uh, had the most... <sighs> it was... It was him being knocked prone and me being like, all right, I need to get up and I need to figure out how I can get there as fast as I can to bring him back up before he, like, dies and, like, just sitting there waiting for my turn again. Yeah, I got paralyzed, knocked prone. Giant lightning beast just grabs his javelin and just fucking one right in the chest while I'm down, which instant knocks me. Second one, there goes two death saves. Then I roll a natural one on my death save. <laughs> but it's crit the most out of anybody by JJ or DM. Every character of mine buys adamantine armor. You gotta be safe. You just gotta be safe. It's paranoia. <laughs> but yes, very emotional. I think everyone, including the DM and me, teared up when he died because just everyone loved Otto and the mentally insane cleric. He was kind of starting to open up, you know? Is he? Is he? He literally started to open up about his feelings, and then immediately died. Yeah. That's what you get yeah, for like, being vulnerable. Right. Yeah. That's, what is it? that's the old uh, police chief, man. I'm sick of this shit. I'm two days away from retirement. <laughs> <laughs> Never mention your retirement. Never. Walls oh, yeah. up. Never be vulnerable. Walls up. We get a DM NPC who like revealed to us after his after Edwin's death that he was a spy for the government. And he was spying on us, making sure we weren't like 
breaking too many laws and stuff, and we're like, Edwin never knew! He never knew the truth! He died! And we were all upset about that, and they're like... <gasps> well, he only revealed it because of the DMNPC, aka JJ, started to cry when my character died. He's like, no way this spy who's become emotionally attached would do this. Never get emotionally attached. <laughs> but, uh... Danny, got any questions? I have a more lighthearted question. Um, Ew. <laughs> if the party was granted a free wish spell, what would they use it for? You little shit. Wait, those exist? Yeah. Tip, at the very least, uh, stereotypically, or at the very least in the campaigns that I have played, usually at the end of a campaign, the after the you know hero saved the world or whatever, they are usually granted a free wish either from some sort of cosmic entity or some deity. Oh. How come I've never heard of this? <laughs> oh, because I've never used Or a them. random deck of many things. <laughs> okay, right. Well, it's also because, like, we have never technically finished uh, a oh, yeah. campaign. <laughs> uh, that's right. Oh, yeah, that's the thing. I've never, ever, ever, ever finished an actual campaign before. <laughs> I'm sorry. Only because he okay. keeps he keeps ending everything. <laughs> uh, hey, ha, mm, 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 huh, who, who? That first off, that is not my fault. All right, people's schedules change and people mm. get busy. Also, mm. it takes money to run a podcast. True. <laughs> uh, I think Danny's asking this as I like giving very strong things to the party, and Danny's a warlock in my campaign. Who did very well giving out I'm asking it, but... <laughs> Yeah, you are. <laughs> oh, I, I asked this to the, the other other sorceries and stories, so I wanted to see. Mm. But you guys got a ninth level wish. Anyone else got any ideas? Oh, wait, what wait, you would get? Oh, wait, Daddy, what, what did you wish for? Or... Yeah, because I'm confused. Like, what did you wish for as a warlock? Because I'm a warlock right now, and I don't know what to wish for. <laughs> um... I so we had a PC's character die and we were like we were like buddies and he died and I was like well and my my warlock in this big dream scape this is JJ's lord up cuz <laughs> <laughs> he's listening to this and my big like dreamscape thing uh my patron did a big lore dump and he was like this is the void and it's like this is where all the souls go when they die and so my character's like, oh shit. Like, my friend who died, he's in there. He's like having his soul eaten by the void. I gotta I gotta save him. And so now I'm like, I gotta I gotta I'm planning on using it to just get up money. Just get like a boatload of money, like twenty five thousand gold pieces. So I can like pay a cleric to resurrect him, but I was like, that doesn't work. That's I'm wishing it myself. <laughs> <laughs> That's fair. That's a very, uh, like, uh, Hercules, like, jumping into the river of souls to save, uh, uh, Megara's soul. Meg. Mm -hmm. And we, yeah, soul, yeah. we have a necromancer in our, in our party, too, who, like, brought his soul back for a little bit to talk to him, and he was, like, terrified of going back, and oh. so I'm like, I gotta save him! I gotta save him! He's my friend! I just can't let him suffer and has to have his soul be devoured. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yes, I, wishes of fun. I honestly don't think the party could agree on any one thing. I don't, That's not fair. Right now, yeah. at least. You know what? Yeah, not Roy right would. Now, no. Well, uh, wait. How about me not being cursed? How's that one for? <laughs> we would probably let you have that. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> <laughs> I, was, I was like, how about how about that? So we don't die. <laughs> I mean, you've handled fair. it very well so far. Other than that oh, one yeah, little totally. headache you had that time, that yeah, nobody yeah. knows how you got that headache when you woke up. Oh yeah, that's true. <laughs> Just like find a cleric, remove curse, boom. No, 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 no. It's, it's no, actually no. a little bit the way the <laughs> way I made the the way I, the way I made the character isn't that simple. I wish it was, but I made sure that I I'm like my own worst enemy. I make it so that way it's literally impossible to do it by typical means like there was mm -hmm. one campaign i basically made an immortal vampire that ashan could not damage he basically had to do six damage no matter what to try and average it out and i would only still take one point of damage because wow. i had auto i had certain healings and i i used his own rules against him on this and i was just like hey i can take this and this right he's like yeah sure okay so that means i get auto healing 
And if you don't do anything more than this, then I only take like half of it. And it was just like, I never took damage whatsoever. And I was just like, I fucking hate this. This is why I've never played Monsters <laughs> of the Week again. Yeah, that's actually it was Monsters of the Week. I played a vampire. God, don't get me started about how you just literally... <laughs> and he can fly shit. without restrictions. And you oh, fucking geez. shut the goddamn door. I'm still pissed about that fucking door. <laughs> the door had a low TC. <laughs> shut up. <laughs> oh my god. I love the door. I love the door now. The door's my favorite. <laughs> I want a monster door. Just so I can fold it into a paper mache crane and present it to our DM. Man, screw you. I'm, now, oh, yeah. just for that, I'm gonna throw a fucking door mimic at Mimic's you. Mimic's where they should be. It's my favorite. Uh, be a friend for me. Yeah, there you go. Uh, <laughs> I was gonna say, it's a mimic. New friends. Oh, my favorite mimic ever. Danny, you can try to hide, and but you'll forget about this anyway, so it's it doesn't matter. Ale will mimic. You, you, you drink a piece of ale? Oh, wait. It's actually a slime. That just oh, entered I'm your an cup. alcoholic. <laughs> <laughs> the ale slime. It co it's oh, colored like ale, and it can bubble up just like it. See a random glass on the ground? Don't drink it. <laughs> oh, I That's a that good one. life rule in general. Yeah. Honestly. Yeah. No, I have negative in. Oh, yeah, I was about to <laughs> I see a chest full of health potions, enjoy, and it's all just mimics. Seeing, uh, is the health potion mimic? Oh, or oh no. so that's a mimic. Um, have you seen the, uh, the... the thing in Tasha's yeah, where it's just like, mimics. yeah, this is a mimic colony. Mimics all the way down, like, because baby. Because mimics can't mimic, yeah, like, like uh, you know, an entire building. Mm, just like one mimic will be like three bricks, and then they'll just build a house out of hundreds of mimics. Yes. <laughs> and some of them are, some of them are sentient enough that they can, like, speak to people and barter if they feel like they can't defeat a party. Yeah, wow. So they just, like, become party this a meteor swarm. thing, and it, it's so much fun. It is. Oh my I, gosh. I want to run, and I might have to see how I can make this work, but it's basically a normal, you know, it's like a normal mimic chest, right? But the caveat is uh, inside of it, uh, basically, you have like mimic swarms of like gold of like gold coin mimics. The babies. Yeah, essentially. <laughs> or like one of them that just I just shoot them like you did the others. <laughs> I was about to say I was like I'll just shoot them. <laughs> well, I, oh, you know what? One of the other um, one of the other very interesting things that I saw for like an urban fantasy, I saw this on Tumblr where uh, basically it was a mimic, but it was for like an Amazon package. So if any time you'd have like a porch pirate when they went to go steal it off the uh, steal it off the porch, it would eat them and it would also grow larger. I love it. So it makes it seem like that there's like <laughs> something big in there, so it would invite more and more people to try and steal it. <laughs> and I'm just like, that I love that idea so much. Throw your cat at it. Beautiful. Your package is a mimic. <laughs> Smack it a few times with a stick, see if it bites you. <laughs> Rule number one, throw salt at it. <laughs> throw your cat at it. No. If your cat gets eaten, then I think it's it was a mimic. mimic. <laughs> but you might need to throw two just to be sure. Danny, more questions. Chop uh, yes. Do you guys have any characters that are kind of like sitting on the back burner that you're ready to just like bring in or a character that you were going to choose to play but ended up not i have a backup character um i've actually made them they're sort of like the character i do for one-offs and stuff and uh it's a dwarf fighter but she comes from a very patriarchal clan so um she's pretending to be a man because she her she wanted to brew beer, which her clan didn't let her do. She was a lesbian, which her clan didn't like. So she's pretending to be a man. She has an enchanted helmet with literally like one of those like yarn beards, but it's enchanted, so it looks like an actual <laughs> beard. And one of her character things is she's a a master, you know, brew brewster, and her uh, ale is called Totsuman Ale. <laughs> so Tot's a man. <laughs> And so she's oh my, my she's my one off character. Anytime I get invited for a game, real quick or whatever, I just level her to whatever. 
and so she's my like back burner fighter this like <laughs> lesbian in drag uh dwarf fighter drag king <laughs> we stand by our dwarven drag queen drag king yeah king yeah yes <laughs> i love that I think I have two characters on the back burner. <laughs> now that I think about it, one's my father in our game, and the other. Wait, can I say the other? Uh, or do you want to say that? Let's save it. Let's save. Okay. It. That'll be. Yeah. That'll be future plot. <laughs> yeah, but, future. Yeah but, yeah, but the one character, my father, technically is an old character that I played in both of the previous podcasts. Mm-hmm. And he, it's basically like somewhat of a spin off and a continuation of where it left off. So that's where he comes into play, but he is currently MIA at the moment. Did he go um, out to go get the milk? Yeah, he kind of went out to get um, the milk. Actually, no, sorry, I can't. I got to stop you. Uh, that, that information <laughs> is classified. <laughs> Probably. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah. He, he went out to get. Um... <laughs> Redacted. redacted he went out to get redacted redacted he went out to get the he went out to get and then he went, and then you know it just can and he's also <laughs> there <laughs> beautiful oh my god that was perfect thank you that was amazing oh, i'm sure alex will love hearing that in the hey hey Sean, remember the D, the uh the improv classes are paying off. <laughs> Yay! Fine. Oh. Oh, God. That is actually the funniest thing. Wait, so how many campaigns have you all done? Um, So far, we have completed a full campaign all the way to level 17, and our characters are now level 20, basically ruling the world. And we're in, like, all the government positions. <laughs> in two nations. But, um... Currently, we're on campaign two, and we're just tracking right through. Okay. It took us two years for the first one, and we're expecting three more. Nice. Oh, wow. Is that really what the projected date is? It was supposed to be three for the last one, but then the boat incident. <laughs> the boat arc. The, the boat, boat arc. arc. There was no boat arc. <laughs> there was no boat arc. So, um, the no boat boat arc. Arc. There is no the boat in Bossing say. <laughs> there is no <laughs> boat. That's what we say every session. So the boat arc was all of our characters put to their extremes mm-hmm. and everything getting so bad that we drew a card from the deck of many things and used wish to just reverse the boat arc that it never happened. That's not that's not what we that's not why we used the wish. We, yeah, it was, was getting um, taco back. It was for back. an NPC, technically. It was getting it was to get a, It was to get a sentient book back. Mm, okay. Who was kind of like a party member? I don't want to say pet, because that's not... He wasn't really it, a pet. It was... So we have these things called artifacts. They're just powerful things that all of our characters carry around. All right. Taco was our favorite PC, Crazy Craig's. Artifact. Sentient book. Could cast spells on its own, but it was completely random. Wild magic Taco, table, basically. Taco, you mean, like, from TV? <laughs> <laughs> I just had to. It, it was right there. But Taco got killed while we were fighting the Mad Mage. Very sad. We all cried. And then, year two years later, we're on the boat arc. We get handed the deck of many things by an NPC who says, fuck y'all, and then leaves the boat. And we're like... Why go on this big adventure to save Taco? Because that was what we were doing. We were on the boat to go to another continent to get a special ring to save him. We were like, let's just keep drawing cards until we get Wish and wish him back. Oh, no! Oh. You fool. Surprisingly, it went better than expected, but our DM has the cursed deck of many things, so the Wish, basically, instead of just giving us Taco back in that moment reverse the event that destroyed Taco rewriting all time and then it got skipped to almost the end of the campaign. Yeah. <laughs> That's hilarious. And the person who used the card but forgot why? all of their why memories. They lost all of their memories. This is why I'm Forever. never giving you all a deck of many things. I'm not Please doing don't. It. 
There's so, also a card in... I just want to try it once. No. In our DM's deck of many things, where it just makes one random person in the world hate you, and <laughs> want to, like, fight you on site. Oh my god. It's like, oh god, uh, I sure hope we don't piss off Steve from... Yeah, I drew that. <laughs> we, never, we never met the NPC, because it was rolled on a T100, which NPC? And it was apparently the, the characters who lost his memory's father, like a level 20 monk. But he lived like three continents away, so I was fine. <laughs> <laughs> um, I think it was Dungeons and Daddies just released their own deck of mini things, so it's got all the traditional cards and then like daddy cards. <laughs> yes. So like one of them, I think, is like Birkenstocks or something. They were doing a video, but I, that's that's my main knowledge of deck of mini things. I've never got one in a campaign. It's from them pulling that in their podcast. <laughs> Is that wishing for more wishes? Yeah, that be our I wish? wouldn't want us to have one. I don't trust any of Witch for a deck of many things. Yeah, do can, we, can we do that as a wish? Like a, nope. a deck of many things? The deck of many, no, the deck of many things technically is its own bad thing. So nothing bad should happen. You should just get it. <laughs> <laughs> My character knew no. in game what a deck of many things was. And was like, oh, no, no, this is trouble. Stop drawing cards. Oh, no. Stop drawing cards. They, they're like, we're going to sneak into our room. Like, it's a little sleepover and draw cards together. God, it's like, That's having, what we did. A, it's yeah. like having a fucking seance in a horror movie. <laughs> and then we got three more wishes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and it was the DM NPC that got the wishes. So we basically just told the DM what to wish for. We, we didn't really have any, like, negative repercussions from the deck of Other anything, than so. the basic ones. Like, we, we, ba we wished for really basic things other than rewriting history. But, yeah. Other I mean, we used, we used, we used, like, during that the... Was, that was, <sighs> like, a... We didn't have any, like, unforeseen negative consequences. Yeah, well, I mean, yeah, pretty much. Other than the fact that the stuff we wished for always somewhat blew up in our faces, like, during the BBEG fight, we got sucked into basically his own mini-plane, me, Danny's character, and the BBEG, who was, like, one-shot, because his special item that he was using to just kill us all blew up. We all got sucked into a plane forever, and we barely kill him in there, and we're just stuck there for eternity, both dead, because we both blew up in the final fight. And someone wished, used the final wish we had to wish all of my friends back, and everybody at the party knew just appeared. Dead bodies and all. Like, dead party members who got buried, and random people we met. Everyone just appeared in the BBG's. Oh, what's his name? The, the, the Goblin Man? <laughs> he would have been there. Yeah, everybody. There's, he died a while ago, too. That would have been like a, like a old corpse, just... There you go. Back up there. Lots of corpses. Danny, questions? You got any more? What what question did I ask before this? Oh, backburner <laughs> characters. Backburner characters. Um, do any of y'all really have any nothing. any other characters that? Went off at a tangent there. Yeah. <laughs> Just a real bit back in. No. Yeah. Same. <laughs> I mean, I don't have a backburner character for this campaign, but I would love to bring back the first character I ever created, because I didn't know what I was doing when I first started, but I have the teeniest amount of more experience now, so I'm like, maybe it'll be nice to go back to being a chaotic, evil tiefling and be the true seductress that she was meant to be. D I mean, Danny, I like check a, the group like, chat. I, have, I, I saw, I like, saw. I, I, Fix it before Alex has a breakdown. Class <laughs> in D&D, just random combos, so I could probably pick something off of there. I'm, well, okay, so like, I didn't have one, I didn't have one, okay. I'm hold on, saying, hold on, like, let I've me explain nothing, myself. I've got nothing every single class. Right, like, I got nothing, hang on. I didn't have one I particularly in mind for the podcast. I got nothing, I got nothing. Let me go into or, my or, mind like, I, like, I, I have all those to choose from, but I didn't choose <laughs> uh <-huh>. one. <laughs> if that makes sense. Okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Whatever you say, Mr. Mind Palace. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. So Pierre. I, so in your guys's campaign, um, are you? 
is it like the agency you're working for called like Boo? Or so are you? Is that like is okay. agents of Boo y'all okay. like camp like, campaign? So is the, that the y'all's actual like group bureau name? is the bureau or of the cultic you have a different one, which is Boo. So, um, I, but oh, our oh, team go, name. Go ahead, go ahead. Hold on, we have a number which I've written down. It's somewhere. Yeah, we have. Yeah, we are. We're, we're like team. <laughs> we're team number. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> what? No, no, no! I'm getting there. I'm getting there. Yeah, you, yeah, you have. <laughs> so we have a num. We actually have like have a every every squad oh, has its own number. That was but not the best. Hold on. No, I I know that I know that the... squad whatever. Yeah. Mm. There you go. Thank you. That's what <laughs> yeah, I was you, thinking. Of. I was gonna say team in the team. future episodes that are coming up in the uh, the Spider Village arc that's gonna be coming up. You guys will understand why they're called the Laser Weasels. And oh, actually, uh, question: How do we how do we spell Laser Weasels? I was gonna. I was about to say, despite Pax's objections, it's spelled with a Z. It's all. I was Z's. about to say, is there a um, Z in there? Yeah, all of the Z's are Z's. Oh, the Z's backwards, <laughs> by the way. Pax thinks it's, Pax we could have it's a big. Gauche, so we could have got, it where like, the, the the Z um, in laser so. and the Z like that little Z from Zoro. In, wow, I forgot the word for weasel, but it's the same oh, big please. Z. Hold on, hold on. I need to draw for this real quick. Same. Hold on, I need to explain. <laughs> Yeah. Oh yeah, they're just okay. capitalized, it's just like in the random areas, one, just like the and then, then a tiny Z at the end. Yeah, hold on. I'll put it on a shirt. How I actually put that one on a shirt? Restore the pot link <laughs> again, d- despite Pax's objections. <laughs> That's every artist ever. It's like I cannot I find the say, one pencil I need. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. Uh, but yes, it is uh the campaign is called Tales of Adventure Agents of Boo, but the organization they work for is known as the Bureau of Occultic Observations. I saw this cuz I I saw a Tumblr post somebody made. And, you know, I want to do kind of something different, you know, I want to do like an occult mystery like action, you know, a la Hellboy and one like I talked about earlier. And I saw somebody, I think somebody made a post about it on Tumblr, just kind of like a random, you know, like a random conversation they had or whatever. And it was, uh, you know, like some supernatural, like, government agency. And they're like, yeah, no, why? It's like, we just say that we're from the Bureau. It's like, why? Oh, we're because we're from, like, the Bureau of, like, I can't remember what their two O's were, because I wanted to specifically switch it, but still have it make sense. Um, and so they said, wait, so you're from Boo? And I was, and the person's like, yes, that's why we just refer to ourselves as the Bureau. And I was like, agents of Boo. That is, that's <laughs> such a great fucking tagline. And then I was like, here it is. The Bureau of Occultic Observations. <laughs> now we're going to get canceled for stealing someone else's IP. See, <laughs> I I specifically remember I specifically remember that I I found the person and I was like, hey, I really like this idea as like I really like this name. Like, do you mind if I use it as I change it? I never fucking heard anything back from them. So I'm like, you know what? This is this is their problem, not mine. <laughs> I never not- never heard anything back from them about it. So if you guys get sued now, shot. you know why. Yeah. Not unless you trademark it, like yeah. I'm about to say you trademark it as, as immediately as you can. Oh, for but sure. no, like when he first said this to me, I was, when he first said this to me, he's like, "Bureau of Occultic Observation." I'm like, "What?" <laughs> like, what the fuck are you? Saying? And then it just stuck. It started. It literally just was just like it's the thing yeah, that and just, it just stuck. Because like, like again, boom. it's just so much fun to be like agents of boo. Yep. I really didn't think y'all were gonna come at me with a group name of Laser Weasel. Yeah. <laughs> you guys still have to think of a group name in my damn campaign. We will have a group name, not if we keep changing characters. <laughs> yeah, in my campaign, this one fucker named Sam has changed characters three times. One because of a death, two because of reasons, three because of reasons, and now his character's coming back, because Danny's gonna revive them for some reason. So Gee, I liked him. <laughs> So what I'm hearing is your group name is just the revolving door. Oh no, it's backwards. Yeah, either the revolving door or the shifter. <laughs> no, like either either the leaving or dying. Or so. Oh my gosh. 
Z. Yes! Yes! Oh. Yes! yes. <laughs> We're putting that on a shirt now! All right, I did not agree to that, actually. I was kidding. Yes, you right. did. It's in your contract. <laughs> chop, chop, monkey boy. Chop, chop. Uh, all right. I should probably think of another question. What is your guys' snack or drink of choice during a session? My family has a problem. Seaweed we chips. Like... Depends on the day. It's true. <laughs> My family buys seven gallons these, at a time. These are like the fastest answers we've ever gotten. It's because we drink these three eat bucks during Target. the Target. Dr. Yeah. Pepper. Uh, Jesus. Oh, what? Wow. Yeah. That's true. <laughs> you really just said clearance. Right. <laughs> it's not bad. Seven gallons of Homer. <laughs> well, I guess that's really only like 20 bucks, which really isn't that bad. <laughs> It's not the money, it's the amount. It's like two and a half weeks. Gallon. If it lasts you about a week, that's fine, right? I was gonna say, how often do you have to get about. seven more gallons? Well, five, but it's only me and my dad drinking it. <laughs> so you drink about half a gallon a day. How many people are in your family? I said we have a problem. I wasn't lying. Okay. Quarter of a gallon every day. There are the people they write math problems about. I think for me, it has to be uh, honestly, it could be anything. Um, I know I usually like something savory, so I either make like some popcorn, or if I have like a sweet tooth or whatever, I just usually get like some. You like some like Skittles or whatnot to kind of munch on. All right. <laughs> I, mean, I mean, we are a podcast full of rainbows, so. <laughs> In more than one way. I'm more than super one paranoid way. about eating sounds, so I just don't snack, sadly. But and then this is just full of water. Yeah, I drink it all day long. Water. Ah, oh, yeah, oh, <laughs> that's actually that's actually the same. That's the same sound my seaweed makes every time I get it because I buy it at Costco and they come in packs of ten and I buy like five of them. <laughs> yeah, but you just like eat it. I just fucking hear the. Well, I'm like doing a whole ass monologue or a lore dump. I just fucking hear the crunch and I'm like, <sighs> hey, it makes good sushi and onigiri. I mean, that's great. I'm glad. I'm happy for you. <laughs> Truly am. Oh wait, I just realized now. Now that Emma's here, we have to have we have to hear the recruitment story. Oh, oh yeah. Uh, oh, oh, how, did he, how did he? How did he? How did he blackmail you? I mean, um, how did oh. he recruit you? So um, I think it, yeah, it, it kind of started like we were on a similar a D and D Discord server, and then we just started into talking, the campaign. Like, hey, into the know, campaign. Like, <laughs> like I think you were looking for players on like testing out your system. It's like yeah, sure, I'll do it. Huh? Um, so we did a little one-off where I played like an elemental monk. Um, loved him; he was great. Um, and then we just yeah. started chatting more, and eventually he was like, "Hey, so uh, I've been trying to do this thing. Would you be interested in playing?" I'm like, "I don't know." Um, but yeah, no, I just ended up hopping on and having fun. No. Oh, so Emmett, have you also never met him in person? Nope. Oh, it's not just me. Thank God. Nope. Okay. Wait, seriously? Yeah, no, uh, Nat and Emmett have never met me in real person. Wait, Lee, have you met him in no? So wait, Lee, have you ever met a Sean or no? Yeah, we, we both live in Chicago. Yeah. Oh, you live we in Chicago? They oh, went yeah. to Astro World together two weeks ago. Well, I don't know anything. I live in Orlando, okay? I don't know. It was in the Discord. <laughs> you just moved to Orlando. This is you my second year. You used to live in Chicago. Yes, you used to. And you decided to leave us. Uh, just first me. Off. <sighs> yeah, I have not met a single person in the campaign in person. I live the farthest away from everyone. Mm -hmm. Everyone else lives south of the normal people border. Freaking like, most Texas, of us live in Texas, Florida. <laughs> Sounds like that. It's like Florida. <laughs> I I, I live in New York, I, best state. Oh, oh, okay. <laughs> I've known everyone in our campaign for over two years, and I just met our DM uh, like a month ago in person. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and then another. I... Oh, sorry. Hmm? No, no, no. What were you saying? 
I was just gonna say, I, I'm glad to know this because sometimes I've like, uh, Sean and David and the other player who's not here tonight, like all know each other. And like, especially yeah, when no, I, I started, haven't. I was like, I feel a little lost because they all kind of knew each other. And I was like, whatever, I'll figure it out. So I'm glad to know it's not just me. Yeah, we have we have a couple of people out of state. Our DM, his roommate, him mm. and his roommate's other friend, and then uh, there's me. I invited my friend from college. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and That's how the internet is, baby. Yeah, and Max, Max and JJ live like an hour away from each other. Never met. <laughs> what? I. Yeah, I'm the wild card for one. <laughs> I just appeared one day. They, they, I literally recruited myself in. I just said, "Hey, I'm gonna, I want to join that campaign you're you're playing." <laughs> yeah, they are. No, because they're like, sorry, we have too many people. And then all of a sudden, I get a DM randomly like, "Hey, a spot just opened up. We kicked someone because they wouldn't show up to sessions." <laughs> I I stole his spot like right when JJ opened it up. I immediately because I had another friend who was in it. We lived together, and they're like, "He's gonna open it up soon." And I was like waiting on my phone for like twenty minutes at least for it to open up so I could get the slot. <laughs> yep. Yeah, the campaigns we were in, the server, now dead, uh, sorry, JJ, um, used to have, like, eight different DMs running campaigns in it, and it was pretty lively, and, um, so yeah, yeah you had to, like, our DMs friend group. <laughs> yeah, you had to, like, fight to get into campaigns sometimes, because people would just be, bam, filled up. Sounds like back when I did local theater. <laughs> it was like, if you weren't in the director's group, you weren't getting cast, which is part of why I quit. Hmm. Oh. Hmm. Hmm. Do you have any? This is the only campaign I ever do. Like, I don't have any other campaigns. Yeah. Hmm. So, would y'all ever like plan to meet up in person and have like an in-person session? I know what a shot looks like. This is a different question. <laughs> Why does why does that sound so hurtful? You said that you said that with your whole chest, but like we bent my tongue. What what have I done to wrong you, my son? Rangers in the rogue. You said that you said that with your whole ass chest. Wow. I'm good. Okay. No, I'm, I'm going back. Home. I'm going back home so I can visit them. <laughs> oh my God. Well, I mean, no, I I think... oh, go ahead, go ahead. I think we said yes to like we would try, but we mm. haven't. So. I think you think so. You you do like a tour, like you would take a train and just be like, you visit Nat first, then me, and then we secretly make a huge ass U turn to go visit them. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we just need we need to get an Airbnb in New Orleans, and you all need to just come here. Yeah, you're in New Orleans. <laughs> yeah, I mean I'm I'm close. New Orleans. Oh yeah, Nat, you're like that's all I needed to hear. New, you're 45 minutes out from New Orleans. No, a couple of hours. Okay. I mean, you're in Louisiana. That's all I needed to hear. Exactly. To Come, I, I will feed you. <laughs> now, okay, so we're going to meet up in New Orleans. Yes. Mm -hmm. um, so Natalie can feed me. I mean, us. <laughs> oh wow. Okay. Yeah. Well, that, that's kind of the plan, though, right? Like we. Right. I know we actually have, uh, and I can't reveal anything just yet, uh, but we do have uh, some fun little things coming up uh, March of next year. So be on the lookout for that because we'll be starting to send some stuff about that on our social media soon. But again, like we would love to be able to do this. It's just a matter of trying to figure out the logistics and just kind of like payments and such. Because uh, I would love to be like, nah, we can just be like, oh yeah, by the way, uh, we get to go like hop on a train to go visit Nat New, uh, you know, like where she lives in Louisiana. Then we go to go visit uh, David. We just kind of go on a road tour. Then we go visit uh, like. Emmett, who lives all the way in Southern California. Yeah, I know my friends. We've made jokes about like we're renting a like a we're renting a car and piling everyone in it, and making a road trip. <laughs> it would end up here since I'm the farthest away. It would end up in New York. Like some like he would fly out to Texas. We would all pile Dude, into this like van, like, like Scooby, like, I'd this drive van, van, like Scooby Doo style, like train. drive yeah. up to New York. They're they're yeah. really love spacious. Love them. The gas mileage, the gas mileage is kind of eh. But like it handles surprisingly well, it's nice. Mm. <laughs> You're welcome. 
You can always count on me for random facts. Nice. Thanks for the van tips. <laughs> Uh, it definitely doesn't we're not have gonna windows. ask what kind of work he is. We're not, we don't move plausible deniability. Is it a white van with some free candy on the side? <laughs> no windows. <laughs> and then uh, here, okay, and then how many bodies could you fit? Um, <laughs> you can fit eight bodies in the back, only on the bottom. <laughs> I mean, people. Uh, well, see, I was about to say like. I'll go anywhere and meet anyone, but I take it back. I'm not going to get in <laughs> <laughs> Someone else has to come with me. As long as you don't openly what get in the van, you're, you're fine. But the second you get in the van... Y'all stay in his house. It's I over. In his <laughs> no, you ain't taking me to no secondary location. <laughs> you better kill me right now, motherfucker. <laughs> oh, okay. I Never mind. Oh, I'm in the van already. I'm in the with a stranger. It's good. <laughs> I I'm oh, I got the car I got the AC turned on already I'm waiting. Hey kid, hey kid, you want to go to Disneyland? <laughs> <laughs> I got the other pops. I got the other pops. I got the first son. Because Disneyland is enough me. of a bait. Disneyland's not enough of a bait. You've got to offer him a Capri Sun too. Yeah, a Capri That's Sun to sweet. I got the yeah. Hopper Pass, y'all. <laughs> right? Disneyland and America, California Adventure. Oh my god. Oh my god. Uh, we just do a mini campaign where it's just how you like a visiting our childhoods and be like, Look, Uncle Fluffy, a nice man from a van gave me a piece of candy. He says he wants oh, to Oh no, no, I have another character <laughs> idea. Yeah, let me go. Oh let me no. Go yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the true warlock backstory. Oh no! <laughs> <laughs> it's too powerful. <sighs> the man and van with a big ass plan. He has it. No I'm kidding. But yeah, so no, I think that is the. I think that is the plan, especially with uh, you know, this fun little uh thing that's gonna be coming up that we're gonna announce uh, fairly soon. Interesting. <laughs> nice. Hmm. Trying to think. Because I, I ran out of questions on the first question. I've just been, like, balling it. So. Y'all answered all the questions I had written down. <laughs> off, though, I'm so sorry. There's another commitment that I have, so I have to sign off right now. But it was awesome meeting you two. Oh, yeah. So Thank you again for so much for coming out and taking time out of your day. Yeah, I, mean, mm -hmm. I guess if we have any more, no more questions, I guess do you want, is this a good time for us to kind of wrap up then? Yeah, I, it's been about two hours. It's probably the longest one you guys have done, this, right? This is the longest one I've done. I mean, <laughs> a few tangents here and there. Oh, this is nothing for five, us. We, four, right, guys? Five. We played for like four hours one time. Yeah. I think, I think the longest like I've done with you is six. Yeah, the yeah. longest I've done run with the Sean is seven hours. Yeah. Oh yeah, our <laughs> sessions are are long, but yeah. no thanks. I will never beat my thirteen hour long finale. Oh my god. Mm. Insane. That's what are you talking about? Uh, the first campaign I was ever in, the one that went from level one to twenty, we ended on a thirteen hour, from like nine p.m. to next morning. <laughs> I want to convince everyone to, to to do that to I just get, do a my, day. My brain gets so dead. Like everyone, clear out this one day in your schedules. Like We're just gonna play D and D for hours. Oh, Jesus Christ, that's a live stream of hell. Yeah, see, I was gonna say, I could play that, I couldn't run it. Like, literally, I can play for hours, but you get maybe two hours out of me if I'm running a game before I get cranky. <laughs> yeah, see, we just midway, we'll have, like, a normal session, and then midway through, we can just have Max run his one shot, one of our players just run his one shot, and then we just go back to session. I love that. <laughs> Give our DM a little break. <laughs> Alright, we'll just yeah. need to wrap up so Lee can go. Yeah, uh, I think yeah. so. So speaking of getting on tangents. Yeah. <laughs> Time flies when you're having fun. Right? Um, I know, do you guys want us to just kind of do anything that we're trying to promote? or? Yeah. It, we'll go guys for wanna, it. Like, yeah. All right, Where can on. people like find your episodes? What's your Twitter handle? Yeah. Uh, well, you can always find us on our Twitter and Instagram for the podcast of Agents of Boo. So that is at agents underscore of underscore boo. Um, you can always find me on Instagram under Corrado Vermil. That's C U R 
A-D-O-V-E-R-M-I-L-L-E. And on my Twitter of King Dapper Wombat, that is at K-I-N-G-D-A-P-P-R-W-O-M-B-A-T. Uh, we release new episodes of our podcast. So you can find us on Anchor. Uh, you can find us on most now channels like on Spotify, Pocket Cast, Anchor, uh, Stitches, iHeartRadio. I think the only one we're still trying to get onto is Apple Podcasts, still for the time being. Uh, but we release new episodes every two weeks uh on saturdays at 12 p.m cst so go ahead and come watch us and uh watch our pcs uh, as they go through a magitech diesel punk world and they are tasked to hunt monsters kill wizards and get loot of course all righty it was lovely to have y'all thank you for answering both of our questions uh, and thanks for having us yeah thank you yeah. all right huh? Bye. Have a good night. Bye. 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 Bye.